Hey everybody, John Amadeo here, NN6JA, um, an extra class amateur radio operator and a TV producer living in Los Angeles. I've been a ham for about 40 years, starting on Long Island as WB2HLO, a tech plus. Then a couple of years later, upgraded to General when I worked at Harrison Radio, which sold electronics and ham radio equipment. When I moved to Los Angeles in the early 1980s, I became KA6MVE, and about three years ago, I updated to Extra and became NN6JA. During my time in Hollywood, about 30 years now, I've produced a lot of TV shows you've probably never heard of, and a couple I hope you have. The show that I'm currently producing is Last Man Standing for ABC. Some of you may know that on Last Man Standing, Tim Allen's character, Mike Baxter, is a man's man. He's well versed in hunting and camping and fishing and all the technologies that go with those activities. Mike is also a bit of a survivalist. As it turns out, Tim Allen is fascinated by all kinds of technology, and he particularly loves radio technology. It was Tim that told us he wanted his character, Mike Baxter, to be a ham radio operator. Here's Tim with his ICOM ID51. And although ham radio would only be a small part of Mike Baxter's character trait, we wanted to portray it as accurately and as positively as possible. And now that we finished our third season on Last Man Standing, I thought it was time to update our ham fans on our use of ham radio in the series. In season one, we had a small ham radio station in Mike Baxter's office at Outdoor Man. Outdoor Man is a fictitious workplace that we created for Mike Baxter. In season one, Mike's station was based on an IC9100 with its HF, VHF, UHF, and of course D-Star capability. He also had an ID91 handheld. And we did manage to get Tim to interact with this equipment. Mike, bad news. Curly's out for poker. Curly's never out for poker. We set up a table at his dad's wake. <laughs> a joint gambler's anonymous. What a wimp. Yeah, I know. A real man would just keep trying to win it all back. <laughs> Now, KA0XTT is a fictitious license we created for Mike Baxter. Tim is interested in ham radio, but he doesn't have his license yet. After we shot that first interaction between Mike and his radio, we decided to move the equipment to another part of his set where we thought it would be seen better. Here's that first version. Because we wanted the station to actually be able to work, about 40 feet above that set, we had all of our UHF, VHF, and HF antennas. Here's a Comet CHV5X and a Comet GP1. Because we had all this real equipment and a number of hams on the crew, we thought we'd actually like to use the radio equipment. So here's the last man standing stage. They're actually filming right over here. So we have to be a little uh, careful with the noise that we have here, but really strong signals coming in from the antennas on the roof, just doing a bang up job here. In order to get some use out of the equipment, we created a number of events live from the set of last man standing. Here are some clips from those events. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is K9EID. K9 Echo, it's a Delta. K9EID calling CQ20 meters and listening. Uh, K9EID. Hi, Bob. Boy, fancy meeting you here. Gordo, WB6NOA. What's new, Bob? Go ahead. Hey, Gordo, WB6NOA, this is K9EID. It's nice to hear you. Boy, you sound great. I hope everything is going well and uh, things are good uh, out there in good old California. Okay, let's see. I got uh, KJ6DYK, and I also got a call I don't quite copy. I think it was KE6. So the KE6 station, would you come back uh, once again with your call sign, please? The Papa Systems Mike Lackey, N6HKH, one of the lead organizers of the event, gave a quick briefing and then it was time to get on the air. This D-Star node had the smallest display ever seen especially when compared to the 7-inch display on my IC7700 in Mike Baxter's office. Cecil Casillas, WD6FZA, got the ball rolling, getting one of the first contacts in the special event. They do the last minute standing. 
name is John. We're Everybody wanted the limited edition QSL card. If you like a QSL card, you can get one at qrz.com. Some log contacts using a computer, but most log by hand. And everybody got on the radio and made contacts. Hotel Special Event Station, Last Man Standing, in studio. Yeah. Welcome to Ham Nation. Gordo here, WB6NOA. Bob is taking a quick break doing a uh, concert gig, and he'll be back next week. And we have an exciting program for you tonight. And just wait till you see all the stuff that's going to go on. And for our listeners only, you're going to hear more great radio sounds than you would believe. We are here with John Amadeo, NN6 Juliet Alpha, at his studio, Last Man Standing. Well, John, where in the world did you ever get the idea to uh, get uh, Mike Baxter involved with Ham Radio on his great show. Come on in and get behind here for any uh, last minute. <laughs> They're just messing with me, folks. Wow, hey, look what I found. Look what I found. Oh, wow. Catch him, catch him. They're making off with the uh, probably five to $10,000 spectrum analyzer. Say bye. And, uh, Say bye bye. And Marty's got it. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen on the set of Last Man Stand. While we were holding these live radio events on the stage, we were having ham radio lunches in our production bungalow. The idea was to teach some of our crew how to get their ham radio licenses. And in our first VE session, we got seven new hams. Our second VE exam yielded eight new hams and our first upgrade to general. In our third VE exam, we had five more hams and our first upgrade to extra. Now, if you're keeping score, that's about 20 new hams on the crew of Last Man Standing. By season two, the cast, the crew, and more importantly, the writing staff had been introduced to ham radio. So we started to get ham radio storylines. Damn it, the monitor is missing. <laughs> KA0XTT, this is WB0ASQ, Papa Yankee 8. Hello? <laughs> Who's there? Mike, do you read me? Hey, Mr. Alzate, this is Kyle, Kyle. KD0XCS. Kyle, Kyle! Yeah, uh, where's Mike? Uh, uh, he's not in the office, sir. How's the rainforest? Were you able to use that Amazon gift card I got you? <laughs> That's a different Amazon, son. Kyle, Kyle, can you hear me? Kyle. Tell Mike I'm really bonding with one of the local tribes. They just stabbed me with a fork covered with frog venom. This was part of a tribal ceremony to make me a better hunter, you see. And wow, I'm suddenly feeling rather weird here. Well, either that, that venom has, has psychedelic properties, or those spider monkeys outside are actually actually singing side two of Abbey Road. I gotta go. Kyle, can you hear me, Kyle? <laughs> wow, Mr. Alzate, when, when you're on frog venom, you sound just like Mandy. <laughs> say something she would say. Kyle, it's me, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. No, seriously, it, it's me. Listen, I've been so desperate to talk to you. Oh, Mandy, I was worried. I, I didn't hear from you. You didn't train my texts. No, I'm sorry. My parents took away my phone and my computer. Oh, I thought you dumped me. I was so bummed my, my roommate sent me with his sister tonight. She's sweet, but she looks disturbingly like my roommate in a dress. Be careful, Kyle. I made that mistake once. By the time I figured it out, I was too revved up to hit the brakes. I'm sorry, who's talking? Well, I'm Walter. Whiskey 4 Uniform Uniform Echo from Lehigh Acres, Florida. Mandy, you can do better than this Kyle fellow. He's not short. <laughs> He's not short. I am not short. Who are you people? Mandy, that's how ham radio works. Right now, there could be hundreds of people all over the world listening to every word you say. Really? 
So basically, it's exactly like Twitter, but more advanced because you don't even have to type. <laughs> this is the greatest thing to ever happen to me. <laughs> check for our meal. If he pays for dinner, he's a winner. <laughs> Hashtag Mandyism. Oh, um, you can put that out there on the hemisphere. Feel free to reham that one. Then after dinner, we took a lovely stroll through the cemetery and we made out on his wife's grave. Does that count as a threesome? <laughs> Uh, wow, Mandy, this is really fun. Um, but I was wondering when I could see you in private. After she finishes her history paper, Kyle. Guys, I'm seriously never going to finish this paper. I know nothing about World War II. I know a little bit. I was on the beach in Omaha. That's great, Walter, but my paper's on the war, not on your Nebraska vacation. <laughs> remember the war like it was yesterday. In fact, a lot better than yesterday. I'm in the early stages of dementia. I might be able to help you with your paper too, Mandy. Really, Mr. Alzate? Yeah, I met a fellow down here in Brazil with lots of fantastic war stories. He's 92, bitter, and speaks with a German accent. You do the math. This is the first time we've ever been to Mike Baxter's home radio station, so obviously we had to build this set just for the show. It's pretty much a dream station. You probably recognize the IC7700 in the center of the desk, and the IC9100 to its right. Naturally, we were very happy to shoot that scene. And when we did, I thought, that might be it for ham radio for a while on the show. But to my delight, my executive producer, think of him as a head writer, came to me and said, we're not done yet. We still have to see Tim Allen talking on the radio. In the next season, we shot the following scene. What you doing, Grandpa? Um, I'm down in my basement watching a football game on a radio. How can we do what we're thankful for? In a minute, come on in here. I want to show you something. Look at this. Ready? All right. Mike, KA0XTT. Just a little shout out. Anybody having a good time here on Thanksgiving? Anybody hide in their basement to avoid their relatives? The thing I like about these guys, if I don't want to listen to them, I just turn them down like this. Grandpa, this is due on Monday. All right, calm down. Let's do your little report. Um, what am I thankful for? I'm thankful for radio, specifically ham radio. Ham radio is heavily regulated by the FCC, the same people who censor network television but not cable, so drug dealers and murderers become our heroes. <laughs> they don't only censor, but they regulate my ham radio. They require me to have a license, test, and if they don't like what I have to say, they can find me or lock me up. <laughs> what a great way to treat the last line of communication during the coming apocalypse. <laughs> Why does the government choose to regulate free speech and ham radio, but anybody can operate, oh, I don't know, a hemp outlet? <laughs> so this Thanksgiving, while the rest of you are enjoying your turkey, I'm savoring my ham. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, FCC, because I know you're listening. I should have just done a book report. For our ham viewers, it's important to note that we're a family comedy. Our mission is not to educate the general public about ham radio. It's just to make them laugh. As I record this, we're standing by for ABC to pick up season four so we can bring you more comedy and hopefully more ham radio fun. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.